Hi everybody, Sasha here. I'm here to talk about nipples. Nipples is the the word of the day. Um, I just recently received a message from one of my friends who just had a baby and who turned a week old and uh, the message reads, I've never said the word nipple so much in my entire life. Yep. Okay, I forget about that, but that's exactly how it is. You're like, nipple, 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 my nipple this, my nipple that, ow, my nipple hurts, ow, I can't believe this has happened to my nipple. <laughs> so it's pretty intense, uh, nipple territory. So let's talk about it. Um, until this point, your nipples were mostly an erotic zone, and now they're a uh, functional baby feeding machine zone. So, sorry, just watching my baby on the video too. So. There is definitely going to be an update video on the feelings that go along with this because now your body has changed and its function has changed and there's a lot of thoughts that come with that and we all have to, you know, go through it. Go through it, get to the other side um, because most of those thoughts are not true, very negative. And um, just have nothing, nothing good to to add to the conversation. <laughs> right now, your body's a miracle, and by some miracle, you've had a baby, which is a miracle. And then, by some miracle, your body is producing food for that baby. It is something to to be grateful for. Holy moly. If your body's not producing milk, you're not alone. Thank God for formula. That baby will be okay. You know, um, again, there's a lot of emotions that go with that. You know, I'm not good enough or, you know, my body's not enough. It's, it's so horrible, the self-talk. And I thought it would not happen to me because my sister had a baby before me and you know, I, I kind of, I saw it happening to her and I was like, it's not going to happen to me. Well, pff, happened to me too, okay? And it's something each one of us has to face and, uh, you know, just realize that we are amazing and that that baby is going to be just fine. And if that baby is seeing us smile and seeing us happy, it's going to be even better, okay? So try not to stress too much about all this crazy nonsense. Although I know it's impossible. So, <laughs> nipples. We have to take care of our nipples, we have to take care of our breasts. Because if we don't take care of the pain and it gets worse, then we can't feed the baby or we can't pump or we pump less. And God forbid the, the breasts get engorged or you get an infection, honey, you don't want to go down that route, okay? So before the milk even comes in, let's talk about that. The milk comes in a few days after the baby is born. When the baby is just born, your breasts have colostrum in them, which is like purely nutritional, you know, fluid, and it's uh, slightly opaque, slightly see-through. It's like in between. It's not milk. Anyway, your baby's stomach is like this big. Don't worry about um, that baby latching on perfectly just yet and feeding too much. If that baby loses a little weight. It's okay. It's like um, you have this, you know, you have this time to kind of get it, get it together a little bit. Um, again, don't stress. Watch the video that I made on latching. You want to get a good latch as soon as you can and if you're having trouble you are not alone okay um a good latch the whole nipples inside the mouth and it doesn't hurt and if it does hurt it's wrong and if you're gonna and the minute it hurts you gotta take that take a finger and pop it into the baby's mouth and disconnect don't let that baby suck on a nipple while it hurts it just gets worse and then by the time you're done, you're so sore that you can't feed that baby again. And, you know, oh, and if you do, 
you're just associating pain with feeding the baby, then it becomes psychological. Like you don't want to go down that route. Okay. So once the milk um, comes in, once the milk comes in, you're going to be like, boom, I felt that. Okay. Don't wait for that moment to start massaging the breasts. So when the baby comes out, however that happens, start massaging the breasts. The milk is not even in there yet, but you just start massaging the breasts as much as you can. Um, so by the time that the milk does come, your, your breasts are fluid and soft and supple, not hard and, you know, like they feel like lifted and like rocks. You don't want, you don't want it like that. So massage the breasts and, you know, throughout, throughout the whole time you're pumping, even when they feel great, massage them anyway. The problem is that we wait until they hurt to massage. Massage, massage, massage. Best time to massage? In the shower, when the hot water is falling on you, the heat, any kind of heat is amazing. So hot water, uh, warm compresses, if you go to like spas, uh, you know, steam, banyas, all that is wonderful. Uh, one that I discovered was uh, flax seeds, right? So you basically take a sock, and this is like, um, some kind of like thing that I bought. Anyway, you take a sock and you just put in flax seeds in it. That's all you got to do. They did a study where they did this with a bunch of different seeds and found out that flax seed was the easiest and the best to retain heat. And um, um, it was just good. Pop it in the microwave, 20 seconds, um, depending on the size of the bag. Find the time, you know, do an experiment. And boom, you got yourself a compress that you could reuse. You could also put it in the freezer if you want. Boom. Flax seeds. Very nice. Okay, so you got the compresses, you got the flax seeds. Then every time you breastfeed, every time you pump, you want to take care of the nipples. So get yourself a cream. I used a linolin cream. You could a uh, linolin cream by Medela. Most of my things were by Medela, just to make it easier. But um, Lansino makes it, um, it's called linolin cream. You could also get a non-linolin cream. The one I got was this uh, Earth Mama Baby Angel, Angel Baby Cream. It also worked. Whatever works for you. One of my friends, she actually was talking about this thing called Silverettes. Silverettes is like a nipple protectant. It's silver. Um... I'll put all the information down below the video, but basically silver is antimicrobial, it's um, antifungal naturally, so you're just protecting the nipple from getting infected, okay? And also bringing back some moisture, you know? Uh, another one that I used, and this is when I was in a place of like, oh my god, that hurts, like I need to heal myself, okay? I use these uh, Lansino gel pads. They're like these circular gel pads. I wish I could show you some of this stuff, but um, I gave all of it away to all my mommy friends. So, those pads, when I was, they're a little bit more expensive, obviously, but, um, uh, but I, I bought them like twice or three times. They're reusable. You could use them three days in a row. I even cut them in half, so I only used half a circle. It was just basically like emergency nipple, emergency nipple care. Okay, um, so that really that really helped me. Another great natural remedy is cabbage. You probably heard about this from your doula or your grandma. You know. Um, cabbage much like these gel pads kind of like the same idea um you know if you're feeling engorged or your nipples are really sore take some leaves you could even crush them a little bit so you get the juice uh out a little bit and then, then just apply it to your breasts and leave it on there for for however long you can you could sleep with it you could you know wrap it around and sleep or leave it on for an hour half an hour however long you can uh, and then you can also put it in the fridge, and uh, now you have a cold, cold relief, okay? So the 
the only downside with cabbage is that, you know, it's messy and it's kind of stinky. So that's why, you know, sometimes I would use these gel pads. You could also pop them in the fridge. That was the whole idea. I'll put all that information down below. What else? Okay, so now that you've, you know, the milk has come in, the baby's feeding, you have waited long enough to establish your milk production, okay? Which means that when, as your baby's feeding, you're basically training your body how much milk to produce. If you're got one baby, your body should be making enough milk for one baby. And if you've got twins, your body's producing enough milk for twins. That's why you really shouldn't pump in the beginning because you're telling your body, like, the twins are here, bring it over, okay? There's circumstances where you're going to have to pump. Maybe you have too much milk, um, although I would say if you have too much milk and pu pumping will increase the, the production, not, not decrease the production. Um, but sometimes you, you know, you're going to go to work sooner. So you want to build up like a, a milk reserve in your fridge. So you want to get a lot of milk out. So that's one reason why you would, I guess, you know, pump right away. Be careful because pumping is kind of like a part-time job. Like, every time the baby eats, was that every three hours? That's, like, every three hours you got to pump. And if you don't pump, that milk builds up. So, you have to find a balance where you are producing enough milk for this baby um, and not for two. Anyway, okay, that's my spiel about pumping. So you've, you've developed a, a pumping, um, you're, you're ready for pumping. Uh, your pump will come with these things called phalanges that basically go over your nipples. I hope you can see that. Let me check if you can see that. Yeah, you can see that. Okay. I always turn off my screen. Uh, my pump came with these. These are standard size. These were too small for me. So don't assume that the standard size is your size. I got the bigger ones. They fit me better. They didn't hurt. These felt like razor sharp knives, and these did not. Okay? Also, um, and this, you know, this is what I would use on my ha hand pump as well. Okay? Um, all right? This, I did not pump only with the hand pump, but the hand pump was my travel companion. And also, you know, it's a great, uh, it's, it's great just to relieve yourself if you're, if you're feeling like, ooh, you know, got a little too much in there. You know, you just pump, relieve yourself a little bit so you're not dying, you don't cause an infection. So yeah, the, the phalanges. Um, that's it for like nipple nipple care, but there's some accessories that I wanted to talk about, okay? Like for instance, when you're pumping, you want to be comfortable. You don't want to be holding anything. So they sell these bras with the holes, so you could put the flanges through the holes, but those are pretty expensive and I don't know, I didn't want to commit. And then I, my, my doula told me just to make one. So basically, I just cut out some holes out of a sports bra, and then you just stick these in, stick these bad boys in, and you're ready to go. You can also, this way, have a couple of, few bras, and, you know, change them so that, because they get really nasty when they get the milk on them, so now you have a few, you could wash them, etc. Another accessory that I definitely want to mention is the uh, feeding tanks. They, you know, the pumping tanks, I don't know what they're called, baby tanks, infant tanks, I don't know. <laughs> but basically they have these clips, boom, you're ready to go, ready to pump, ready to feed, snap it back on. I only wore these. I wore these in a bunch of different colors, and then I had a, you know, sweater on top, I was always ready and comfortable. Okay, so that's a really good accessory. And then also, um, because you're 
you know the milk is uh, flowing you might feel like you're leaking here and there so definitely I didn't but a lot of people do they have disposable and also reusable pads so you can um, you could put a little pad in there and uh, it, you know not be worried about your clothes I would definitely have a disposable one in my bag at all times just in this emergency and then uh, mostly use the reusable ones so I could just pop them in the laundry and be done with that. So yeah, that's for the accessories. If you have any questions, leave me a comment. Um, okay, so in summary, <laughs> let's go through that one more time. We got the heat, right? Heat is really good. You get yourself a little heat compress. Um, get yourself a cabbage or those gel pads. Um, give yourself some creams for sure, creams, massage, 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 hand pump will save your life here there. And, um, and yeah, keep your breasts clean, keep your, um, you know, keep your nipples soothed. If it's hurting, you're not doing it right. Something's not happening correctly. Breastfeeding shouldn't hurt. Pumping shouldn't hurt. Okay? You are experiencing more use and more friction with a type of skin that is very soft and supple. So you are going to feel discomfort, but your nipples do get used to it. Okay? But if it hurts, like, ow, ow, that's not the kind of pain you're going to get used to. So take care of your take care of your boobies. And remember you're a great mom and your body's a miracle. And you're a great dad, if you're listening to this. <laughs> and uh, you're doing a great job. You know, it just if that baby eats, that, that that's all you can do, right? That's all you can do. If that baby uh, doesn't eat, get the formula out. Don't worry about it. As long as that baby's eating something um, and growing watching you smile and laugh and that baby's gonna be just fine. Okay, good luck and all the best.